you're listening to Barbell Logic, brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching, where each week we take a systematic walk through strength training and the refining power of voluntary hardship. You're listening to the Barbell Logic Podcast. I'm Matt Reynolds. I'm here, actually, all by myself here for a few minutes until. Nikki and I will be talking here in just a few minutes. And we've got a special treat for you. We just wrapped up the block party last weekend here in Springfield, Missouri. I, I, I don't even hardly know how to do the intro to this without getting choked up and emotional. It was the best weekend of my professional career. I am so thankful for the community at Barbell Logic that are clients of ours, that are our staff and amazing coaches that are you, the listeners, the consumers of our content. We recorded everything that we talked about at the block party, and we are going to put that out at some point in the near future, but we wanted to give you a little tease. This was the opening talk from Nikki Sims and myself about the whole picture, about what we're trying to do to live a healthy, sustainable lifestyle through training, activity, nutrition, and boundaries and to talk really through what we were missing several years ago when it was strength at all costs versus now the whole self. And so we had a blast, Nikki and I, uh, (laughs) we worked on this presentation together while she was in Orange County and I was in Springfield, Missouri. We didn't test it out while we, you know, beforehand, we just got up and did it like we were doing a podcast. And so after the talk, we thought that would be good to put out as a podcast and give people a little bit of a teaser of what they missed at the block party. So I hope you can make it next year. I know it's going to be in June back here in beautiful Southwest Missouri, Ozarks, beautiful, incredible food, incredible stay. So without further ado, here is Matt Reynolds and Nikki Sims on the whole picture. What's up, everybody? How you guys doing? You guys excited? I am psyched. (laughs) Let's do this. So you hear me okay? Loud enough? You want to test yours? <laughs> I'm always going to be louder than you. <laughs> Noah's running our notes, by the way. So oh, that's, that's where they are. Awesome. Okay. Thank you for coming. I said this a little bit yesterday at the gym, but really means a lot to us that you've chosen to spend your money and your time and your effort to come hang out with us this weekend. We hope that we can give you an incredible time. Great service. We're going to learn a lot of stuff today, but we're going to have a great time as well. Hopefully you guys had a blast at the King of the Hill yesterday. I want to specifically reach out to Jordan Stanton, wherever you are. Jordan Sand ran that whole thing. He came out here, didn't ask for anything in return, didn't ask to get paid, just came out and ran that. So I'd love to give him a hand. He crushed it. What a fun way to do a meet. For those of you who have been to powerlifting meets or strengthlifting meets before, we love those too. But man, that runs way smoother and way faster. And you get to be a lifter and you get to watch and be part of the audience and clap and cheer and everything is super, super fun. So, all right, you wanna get started? Yeah. So one of the things, first off, I guess, who are we? God, I hope that you didn't spend like thousands of dollars. Does anybody in Missouri not know who Matt Reynolds is? Not not know (laughs) who we are. So you're good. So this is us. And this is our middle class fancy. (laughs) Do you guys ever follow? Middle class fancy is. Do you follow us? Instagram, Instagram? middle class fancy is awesome. (laughs) We took this. Corporate weirdos. (laughs) Yeah. So that's us. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm the founder and CEO. I started this company in 2016. Nikki was actually my very first employee, not doing what you're doing now. Yeah. Back then, you're doing what, like, 30 people do now. Mm-hmm. So, and Nikki is the CXO, which is the chief experience officer. Her job is to make sure that both our clients and our coaches have an excellent experience at Barbell Logic. So, it's a pretty fun group, and we've got a great group of people, and then we've got an entire leadership team that's here. You're going to see a bunch of them today for sure. So one of the things that you might have as you've listened to the podcast, for a long time, it was really like strength at all costs. Strength at all costs. And we're gonna talk a lot today. We love strength. We're not gonna get away from strength. Strength is super important. But other things matter, right? Like strength at all costs is not really who we are. Strength at all costs is not who most of you are. For some of you, you are super high level competitive lifters and it might be strength at all costs, but that is a very, very, very tiny percentage of who we have at Barbell Logic. And you probably have gone through periods of your life for like six, eight months, it was strength at all costs. Gained a bunch of weight, stopped other hobbies, got sleep apnea, (laughs) and you're like, this is not sustainable. (laughs) 
the longer we've been in business, the more we had to appreciate like what else is involved. What is the long term life of being strong? And so we've had to make some changes on what we support for our clients, even though the foundation is strength. So we want to walk through that. So what we were missing was the rest of the stuff, right? For us, this is the top level. Quality of life is what matters. That's uh, much fatter Andrew Jackson right there. Uh, he looks way better. This is strength that not all costs, Andrew Jackson. <laughs> Quality of life is really what everyone in this room is trying to improve. And that is our why. So if you've heard that talk by Simon Sinek, what is your why? Like, we try to improve quality of life. And by the way, lots of things improve quality of life that are not just what we do, right? Dr. Pewter, you guys know from the podcast, is a psychiatrist and he helps people with mental health. He improves quality of life, right? YNAB, you get in control of your finances, your quality of life improves, right? You go to marriage counseling, you have a better relationship, your quality of life improves. We're just not in the business of budgeting or marital counseling or psychiatry, although we try to feature a lot of that because it still leads to quality of life. For us, quality of life is really where it's at, and that is our why. And getting stronger, as you probably have learned, changes how you interact with life, right? What you do in the gym tends to get into your other activities. It changes your structure of your day. It infiltrates a lot of things, more than just your training session and more than just the interactions that you have with your coach. Like, you look forward to your workout, you plan around it, and it works the other way around, too. Like, what happens outside the gym will really support or can cause some problems with your training. So we have to see the whole picture to make both improve. Yep. So what are some of these things, right? One is that we want training to support our lifestyle. Look at that gorgeous man, (laughs) Carl Shute, right there. (laughs) Probably should have Carl Shute come up and talk about this, but that was... So one of the things we want to do, and remember that the group out here today is split about half coaches and half clients, but we can speak to both of this. So if you're a client, you want to make sure that your training and what you're doing in and out of the gym supports your lifestyle. And really, you want to start thinking about, what do I want my lifestyle to be? And I want what I'm doing today to support who I want to be tomorrow, right now. Start where you are today. Like, that's a great place to start. Like, Carl, how much time did it take to go from the first picture to the second picture? Jesus knows, Carl. (laughs) No, I just... uh, (laughs) No. Okay, eight months. And four and 47 years. Maybe it'll take a year and a half. Whatever, right? It takes... No, it takes a while. But those changes come gradually. So... (laughs) Yeah, look at that. No, No chest hair. It's gorgeous. So we just want to make sure that we support our lifestyle. So if you're a client and you haven't talked to your coach about what you want your lifestyle to be, what your goal is, what your overarching goals are, you need to do that. If you're a coach in the room and you can't very quickly, within one or two words, walk through your client list and say, this is what their primary goal is, this is what we're working towards, then there is a disconnect. And so we want to be able to repair that starting this weekend. And that's really one of the things we're trying to do from a philosophical perspective at Barbell Logic. And if you're not entirely sure what your lifestyle goals are, you can do this little exercise where you just off the cuff, think of the things that are important to you and what you want to be like in the next few years. And then ask yourself why, and then ask yourself why again, and go like five whys deep and you get to see like what's truly important and it'll make more clear what you need to work towards. And that'll help guide your coach very helpfully as well. So if you're not really sure where you want to get to, start with that little exercise. I like to think too about like, what is my perfect day? What would my perfect day look like? And it needs to be realistic, right? I can't be like, my perfect day would be, I'm going to live in Fiji with like six concubines. And just kidding. So whatever. So like figure out what is something achievable and then think about, can I work towards those goals, right? Probably won't be Fiji and concubines, but I digress. (laughs) Probably not that either because they need teeth. So this is the Ozarks. (laughs) So, are we standing up here and telling you to get away from the barbell? Absolutely not. (laughs) We are strength coaches, and we're really good at that, so we're not really going to deviate from that. We don't want to tell you how to do BOSU ball workouts because we would just make you do things that look funny for our entertainment. So we're always going to have strength as the foundation of our programming, the foundation of the direction, although we do know that sometimes there are periods of vacation or times when you just don't want to really go forward and like hammer a bunch of PRs. So that might evolve a little bit, but we look at it over the span of like a year, what's going to ebb and flow over the year, but probably was going to be a barbell in your hands. 
unless, you know, there's another pandemic and you can't get to a gym for a while. But everybody here probably has their own home gyms by now. <laughs> but that's always going to be in your program because we know it works. The more muscle you have on your skeleton, the more useful you are, the healthier you are. And the more you see results of your training that actually mean more than what you look like. It goes deeper than that. So that's always going to be the core. Yeah, we still believe that strength is the foundation of fitness itself. Nothing has changed there. We know that it's going to have the most positive impact on all of the other life skills, physical abilities, those type of modalities. Strength is going to give us the best thing for our buck, but it's not the only thing. So what are some other things that have made a big impact in our life over the last several years? Well, one is obviously nutrition. Is this me? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So I don't eat. Nutrition, <laughs> nutrition has dramatically changed my life in the last year or in seven and a half months. <laughs> nutrition has dramatically changed my life. Far better changed than Carl did in slightly less time. No. Uh, <laughs> Jillian does such a tremendous job in our nutrition. I am a Barbell Logic client. Jillian is my nutrition coach. I report to her. She gives me a plan. I had a plan going into this weekend, right? I didn't want to come in bloated and feeling gross. So that became a huge piece for me. I had to recognize and have some self-awareness that while I love being strong and I love to train, I did not have a right relationship with food. I did not have a right relationship with alcohol. I'm not an alcoholic. I wasn't drinking to get drunk. It's too many calories for me. There were empty calories. I needed to be able to have a right relationship with food. Not one time in the last seven and a half months it's not really been seven and a half months, it's been like a year. Not one time last year have I ever felt deprived. Have I ever felt like I was dieting? Not once. It's not what we do. What Jillian, she'll talk about this later today. It's a sustainable building of habits that will last forever. Now I can still drink whiskey tonight. I'm going to eat great food today. I had great food last night. We're going to do it, but it's all in moderation. So understanding that nutrition piece is a huge part of this to have a sustainable, lifelong relationship correct with food so that it helps support my lifestyle long-term. And it's one of those things that once you know how great you can feel when you're actually eating how you want to be eating to support what's important to you, you like don't want anything else. Yeah. Like we used to have seminars and we'd end the seminar with, you know, eating a box of Cheez-Its. And, yeah. like, <laughs> and whiskey till three whiskey. in the morning and stuff like that. And that's totally different now because over some course correction and also thanks to Jillian, like we've really gotten into some different habits, like more whole foods, like much more water, like just yep. simple little things like that. But once there's like something switches and you're just like, damn, I want to feel like this all the time. Yeah. And it's like, no, the Cheez-Its aren't worth it all the time. That's right. <laughs> Sometimes, yes. Yeah, they're still fine. The yeah. extra toasty kind, especially. Yeah. <laughs> so in addition to your lifting workouts, a lot of you probably like to do other activities too. You probably have kids that you participate in their sports with or you just go out and goof around with them. But there tends to be more to what you want to do with your day than just train and just work. And we found that engaging in a lot of different physical activities like going on walks, I like to do jujitsu, you get to do more with your body in a cool way. And like training is such a cool physical hobby. You know, there are creative hobbies. You can write, you can whatever, do other crochet sports. I love yeah. crochet. <laughs> but like the physical hobby is so cool because you get such a great payoff from it. Unless you do jujitsu like me and then you just get your joints all jacked up. <laughs> but it's a great mental exercise where you get to shut off from work and you get to have quality time with people like you and Rachel go for walks all the time. Yeah. The thing for me with activity is you find the thing that you love. Do the thing that you love, right? I'm not going to go do Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I've already ruined all my joints doing strongman years ago. But I love spending quality time with my wife every single morning. I get up, you know, at 4.15 in the morning, which doesn't actually make me happy. It's not something I'm bragging about, rise and grind. I wish I could sleep a little later. I get up, I do some work, and when Rachel wakes up, the first thing she does is she texts me good morning, and she puts on her walking shoes, and she comes downstairs, and we walk around the neighborhood, and we do a walk every single morning, and I feel so much better. We often do it in the evening. I love to hike with my family. I like to go down. We've got a rural cabin that we've basically built the whole inside of and work on my land. Like that to me is that's my activity. And that's my lifestyle through training and nutrition. This was just the next piece. Activity is a huge piece of this. So whether that's conditioning for you, whether it's Brazilian jiu-jitsu, whether it's walking around your neighborhood, activity is a huge piece of who we are and what we do. I've lived that lifestyle of a competitive high-level powerlifter, competitive high-level strongman, and your entire activity is that sport. You literally spend the rest of your day trying to not use up calories, lay around and eat food and pour olive oil on your pizza to gain as much weight as you can and set the PRs 
but you can't tie your shoes. I mean, your blood pressure is 190 over 102. Like that's not where I want to be, right? So activity has been a huge piece of that for us as well. And we want to begin to work that in. For those of you who haven't, we have opportunities for that in your actual program. Your strength coach can do this. No additional charge. This isn't trying to be an upsell. If this isn't in your programming, ask for it. Our coaches will give it to you, right? We want to work that direction. So body composition, again, this has been a huge change for me. And it's not just, we've seen this happen really with a lot of our coaches and a lot of our clients over the last several years. It obviously has a direct impact on health. You talk about blood pressure. In spite of me wearing a red shirt, my face probably being beat red right now, my blood pressure is down like 40 points on both sides. A massive difference, right? I feel so much better. My insulin sensitivity, blood sugar, the way I sleep, I track it at night, like all that's better. I probably don't even need my CPAP. I just love my CPAP, so now I'm gonna sleep with it the rest of my life. So it dramatically changed who I was and the way I carried myself, right? It supported my lifestyle. And here's the thing. In the strength community, aesthetics is often a dirty word. It shouldn't be, it should stop, right? We're not training bodybuilders for the sake of being body, that's not what we do, right? We don't want anybody to live on chicken breast and broccoli and get ready to put on a pink thong bikini and stand on stage and oil your body up and have a beauty pageant with other guys or girls. Like, if that's what you wanna do, Jordan Stanton, you could probably pull that off, right? <laughs> but for most of us, almost everybody, the vast majority of people who join Barbell Logic, this is their number one goal when they join. They are overweight, they're obese, they need to lose some fat, and they wanna change their body composition. And if what we do as coaches is double their strength and they don't lose a single pound of body fat, you have missed the point. So for coaches, listen to your clients and make sure you understand, if this is a big goal, we work towards this goal. Now, if somebody comes in and they're already underweight, they're a 155 pound guy, unless you're like 5'2", like Ordway. So if they're underweight and they wanna lose, then we have to have a heart to heart conversation about some of the mental health and like expectations, those things. But for your clients who are overweight and need to lose, we need to work that direction, right? It's really, really important. Listen to your clients and meet them where they are and go after the goals. Clients, if you haven't talked to your coach about this and it's important, do so. Do so, they'll listen. Again, this goes along with this thing. Like I almost didn't put this in here. It almost feels shallow, but the reality is, is that so many of you spend so much time working in the gym, working on your body, training hard, eating right, and then dressing in cargo shorts and shirts that are two sizes too big. Stop. <laughs> Listen, there is a way that every person in this room wants to be perceived. I get it. Not everybody in the room is a CEO of a company, right? And most CEOs of companies don't dress like that. But I'm a CEO of a fitness company, so I had to figure out how to look that part. I'm not gonna wear three-piece suits. I'm never gonna wear three-piece suits. I wear a suit once a year to Cody Miller's wedding. That's it, right? Like, when you guys get married, I'll wear a suit. Outside of that, I'm not wearing it. But I had to figure out how to dress so that I felt better. So it started with me, it started with my confidence, the way I felt about the way I looked. I didn't want to dress like a power lifter anymore. I didn't want board shorts and the shirt with like the giant logo on it. Like that just wasn't who I was. Now, if that is who you are and that's your niche and your aesthetic, like go for it. But understand that if you don't put any thought into your style, you should. It changes the way other people perceive you and it changes the way you perceive yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wearing like certain clothes bring out a certain feeling in yourself. You put on clothes and you're just like, you feel dumpy and that's kind of how you go out into the day or you put something on and you feel really proud of yourself. And I've heard a lot of conversations as people first begin lifting that they're gaining weight. Some women are like, oh, I'm bulking up a little bit and they're uncomfortable. And what is happening at that point is they're still wearing the clothes from their old body and they need to change their style to actually really accentuate and accommodate the changes that they've made. So like you said, the cargo shorts or baggy shirts, like those might be hiding clothes, but if you just change to really accentuate the work that you've done. Like sure three inch inseam shorts, right? <laughs> that's, that's why we wear short shorts. I mean, we joke about it a lot. And obviously some of you are not gonna be comfortable in three inch shorts, but look, you guys are all squatting, your legs are jacked. Start to bring the inseam up, right? If you're, wearing, if you're a dude and you're wearing shorts that go below the knee, you're screwing this thing up, right? I mean, All right. Start about with the, the seven crotch inch. is getting blown out. Just, we know where this is going. Yeah. <laughs> start with the seven inch and then go to five. And then one day you'll be like, I'm going to try some three inch. And it'll be great. And then you'll do three inch. You'll be like, three inch is business casual, right? And I'm going to be like, yes, it is. Go. All right. 
So physical health, we gotta be really careful with this one, right? We can't stand up and say that this is gonna fix everybody's physical health, but like on a big picture bell curve, what we do in the gym, exercise, nutrition, has clearly a direct impact on physical health. For many of you, and especially for our clients who are in the population of 50 plus, this is the thing that matters. It's not body composition. They don't care how strong their deadlift gets. They care about this. They care about being there to watch their granddaughters walk down the aisle at their wedding. Our job as coaches is to make sure we get there, right? Get your client's blood pressure down. Get your client's blood sugar in check, right? That is why we do this. This is important. It might be the most important thing we do and is often overlooked. It's overlooked because powerlifters are unhealthy. Strong men are unhealthy. Bodybuilders are on stage this close to death. That is not who we train, right? Now, will we train a bodybuilder? Yes. Will we train a powerlifter? Yes. Will we train strong men? Yes. But primarily, 99% of our demographic want to be healthier. Would anybody say, like, I really just want to have a lifestyle where I, like, get really morbidly obese and unhealthy, but I'd like to squat 800 pounds? And maybe there's one or two of you out there. But probably not. So health is a big piece of this. Yeah. And the last one, mental and emotional health. And obviously, Dr. Peter's resources are very important for this. But also, the longer you lift, most of you have been at this for years and years and years, you experience periods where your mental health feels really, really good. And then you might experience periods of time where everything is very stressful. You go through bouts of depression. And life can really challenge how well you're able to experience things that actually bring you a lot of joy. But training has and it can be a very important staple. It can be your anchor and it could be something that's very consistent, a consistent way for you to take action, which is really important when things are very difficult and you can't seem to make any changes. And it also, I found, is a really useful way to reinforce your sense of individual identity. And as you put yourself out there more and more and you make changes in your life, it's really useful to have your own space where you can do that and your own kind of connection to how hard you work, producing results that you can really see and feel. And it also, like this weekend, creates a really wonderful sense of community. So we all probably left alone in our garages, and then we get to come here and be like, oh, other people left alone in their garages. <laughs> and then we can go back and lift alone in our garages. But we know everyone else exists. <laughs> it's nice to have people who really feel the same things as we do. It's a very important part of connection. And that really enforces mental health. What I've found to be really important as all of our devices have all the notifications and you can be connected at all times, I've become really aware to how much we can live in these worlds, like on our phones, notifications kind of yanking you in a hundred different ways, not having short up boundaries to prevent other people from stealing your focus and driving you away from your own purpose. And you end up being kind of overwhelmed with these ideas of what you think you should be doing because they're important to other people, other people who think that you should be wearing three-inch shorts. Maybe you don't want to wear three-inch shorts. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. Wow, no, the crowd does not like that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is a three-inch short crowd. No. <laughs> but sometimes the weight of shooting yourself can just be too much, and notifications can get you going in different directions that don't really matter to you. And... If you read this quote at the top, when you're feeling a lot of points of resentment and you're feeling like you're distracted and not really sure what a good place to spend your time on, and if you're feeling really angry at people, something that could be occurring is that you're letting people violate your boundaries. They're telling you what's important to you. They want to make their urgent feel like you're urgent. They want to kind of bring you down with complaining, stuff like that. And so if you can get to this point where you really feel like you're in control of how you're spending your time by doing things like managing your notifications, organizing your schedule so that you know you have a place to do everything that's important to you, organizing your budget, like YNAB really helps you do that. You get to feel in a point where you get up and you choose your day instead of your day happening to you. And it brings you a whole lot of joy. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you feel like you're a slave to technology, Nobody wants to be there. You don't have to be a slave to technology. And that's both for the clients and the coaches. All of us, most of us, are a slave at some point to social media, notifications kicking on our phone, Slack, Discord, notifications on the Block app, like whatever that thing is, right? 
we had a coach talk yesterday, and he actually is in New Jersey, just outside of New York. And he zoomed in and spoke, and he's like, I'm actually wearing swimming trunks right now. You can't see because I'm from the chest up. And as soon as I get off of this call presenting to the block staff, my wife and I are heading to the beach. That's what we want. That's what I want out of my staff. I want the guy who's like, I set up this time to work, and when the work is over, I get to go do the things that are really important in life, right? The most important things are the least urgent. That's the key, right? And you've got to focus on those things. So as we walk through all of these pieces of things that create the whole self, that doesn't mean that you're going to attach to all seven or eight of those items. But what will be important this weekend is to think about what is your purpose? What are the important things? What do we want to work towards? Clients, talk to your coaches about that. Coaches, talk to your clients about it. Figure out what is the thing that's important to them and let's help meet them where they are and help them achieve their goals. When we do that, we have a term we've used a lot lately, which is experience strength. When we say experience strength, that's what we're talking about. We're not talking about experiencing, you know, your eyes bugging out of your head squat, although yes, that's part of it. That is a right? part of a, the strengthening experience. Absolutely. <laughs> but it's also these other things. So think about your purpose so that you can focus on the whole self and not be real heavy in one position and really struggling in some of these other categories. Right? Yeah. Good. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. <laughs>